Hello everybody, I hope um, everybody's doing great. I'm just going to check we are streaming and we are indeed. So today what I want to do is uh, to share with you my um, the structure that I use. Um, I use it in every paper that I write. And um, this structure has got me uh, an r, &R in uh, top journals. Uh, for um, four papers, three of those have been uh, published, and uh, one got uh, to the third round of revised and resubmit, and then was rejected. So I'm not going to guarantee publication, but uh, or revised resubmit, obviously. But you know, this is the. Um, I've been very su successful with this. Now, um, this relates a little bit to the, the piece that our, uh, our discussion uh, some time ago about, um, you know, uh, can you publish without being a genius? So this is the structure that I use um, to write an article knowing that I'm not a genius. And I came up with the structure because very early in, um, in my publication career, um, I got a lot of pushback from reviewers that, um, you know, I wasn't uh, really making um, a theoretical contribution. So basically what I uh, thought about is how can I write a paper in a way that makes a theoretical contribution? And basically I, I found out um, the only time a paper that I wrote in this way was uh, rejected. Uh, without a revise and resubmit. Well, yes, without a revise and resubmit. So I went through the first round of reviews from a top journal was um, actually a paper that I'm going to discuss with you today about knowledge hiding, um, which was rejected from a special issue because most of research on knowledge hiding is experimental. I thought they would like to see something qualitative. They didn't. And then I just submitted, uh, submitted it to an IS journal and um, and it got re rejected because the opening reads a little bit too much like org theory. So they told me, you know, the, the, the paper's good, but it just sounds like a, an organization's paper rather than an IS paper. So anyway, um, so without further ado, let me show you my structure, okay? So this is a structure and it's pretty simple, okay? And uh, this is basically around how you write the theory and how you write uh, the, the discussion. So the idea is basically to say that the current model of a specific phenomenon in the theory is only one of at least two possible sp specifications of a broader model, okay? And then what I do in my paper is I describe this alternative specification and say, okay, so this means that we have this broader model and this allows us to theorize um, a specific phenomenon in, um, in some way. Okay. So again, we have an accepted model of, uh, of, um, of a phenomenon. I argue this thing that we think is a model is actually a specification of a model. And then I show the other specification and I use that specification and the current one to build a more general model. As simple as this, okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to show you what this looks like in uh, three papers, three papers that I wrote. Two of them published in MS Quarterly, which is one of the top journals in, in my field, which is Information Systems. And another one, which is this uh, knowledge hiding paper uh, that hasn't been published yet. Um, but that allows me to illustrate how this works in, um, you know, sort of a different paper and in a work in progress. Okay, so. <coughs> so basically, the fundamental idea here is that it comes from this sentence from uh, sociologist Irving Goffman, who said uh, there's 
the two best things in life are a cold beer and a good distinction. And so I cannot offer my reviewers beer because that would be physically impossible and also unethical, but I can offer them a good distinction. Okay. So basically, uh, the way this uh, paper is uh, structured, all of my papers are structured, is by offering uh, a distinction. So saying, what is the model that we have now in the theory? And what is the new model that I'm suggesting based on my data? And obviously, these are all um, empirical papers. Now, I do think that... Um, some of this can be used for theoretical papers. I did get a revise and resubmit of a literature review on remote work arrangements and control based on uh, this uh, same structure. But, you know, the, the emphasis here is on, on theoretical papers. Okay, so let's look at this paper by paper. So in the, in the introduction of my uh, MSQ 2013 paper, which is a dramaturgical model of the pro uh, production of performance data. What I say is that information technology makes people's work transparent. But then I argue that um, there are consequences for impression management of work being transparent and that managers will have, and employees will have very good reason to try to reduce those consequences okay so basically then the research question of the paper is how do people deal with the dramaturgical impression management threats of electronic representations of work and what i do is i build a dramaturgical model of the production of performance data what is the distinction here the distinction here is that my dramaturgical model where data are produced for impression management contrasts with the functional model where data are produced to inform, okay? And so I end the paper by stating that um, to the current specification of the production of performance data or actually the role of information technology or information systems in organizations that says information systems are a window that allows managers to look downwards to really see employees work information systems can also be a store window that uh, that managers use to show performance upward to their leaders so i'm not looking down at employees i'm showing success to my leaders okay that's what i mean by a good distinction okay and it is a good distinction between because these are opposites opposites in the sense that um, surveillance is looking down, impression management is looking up, but also that uh, there's this um, opposition between dramaturgy, impression management, and information. Okay. Um, in my 2017 paper on uh, transfiguration work, the difference is even simpler. It is about arguing that Research on management information systems um, looks at um, data about work and information as something that is produced automatically by information technology and it's almost a subproduct of work. So as I work, uh, my inf information systems keep a record of what I do, the customers I call, the op sales opportunities that I edit, and it reports on that. Okay. And basically what I say is that um, re records or reports or information about employees work um, is something that people do, not that machines do. So you see again, this, uh, this nice difference, this nice opposition, very clear that you can explain to anybody, right? Anybody can understand that, you know, that um, work that machines do is different from the work that people do, right? And I'm sorry, this should be actually be, be bigger. So let me just uh, put this here. Sorry about that. Yeah, actually now it's going to the screen. So I'm just going to put this here. Okay, good. 
I'm really sorry about that, okay? So basically that's the idea, right? And so the, the paper is around this research question of how do people transform the information that they do to do their job into the information that they need to provide for their managers, for their company's information systems. And the, the new thing that I developed in this paper is this model of transfiguration work, which is again, the work that transforms information that people use to work into information that um, uh, they need to report, okay? The theoretical contribution is about the concept of the quality of information, okay? So the idea is that uh, our conception, our model of the quality of information, what makes for, what are the factors that determine the quality of information are different when we think of data, of reports, of information as something that technology does versus something that people do, okay? Now, finally, in this paper that has not been accepted, but uh, that uh, I'm uh, working on, um, the idea here is to, you know, argue that um, boundaries are something that people may want to raise. In management theory and in information systems, boundaries are really seen as, as an obstacle to collaboration. So there's a lot of work about how you lower boundaries, okay? And uh, basically the way I do this is I say, look, there's this whole research about knowledge hiding, which talks about horizontal peer-to-peer -peer knowledge hiding. So these are managers hiding knowledge and information from one another, right? And um, what my research does is it looks at vertical knowledge hiding. So managers hiding knowledge from their leaders, okay? So again, you see this nice difference, this nice distinction. Remember what Goffman said, the best thing is a cold beer and a good distinction, right? So boundaries being raised versus being lowered. So these are neat opposites. And then horizontal knowledge hiding. So me hiding from my peers versus vertical, me hiding from my leader. So these are good, simple distinctions that you can explain to anybody, even if people don't really understand uh, your theory. Now, I told you, okay, this gets your revise and resubmit, okay? So what do I fight or, you know, work on in the revise and resubmit rounds? What, what is the whole discussion with reviewers? Now, the whole discussion with reviewers is about the introduction and the bottom end of the discussion. It's about the theoretical contribution. And I've had to change this literally in all of my papers. Um, and this comes from two things. One is that um, MIT was pr pretty sucky. I didn't like really learn a lot. When I was there, I, I didn't get a, a lot of like good training. Um, while I was there on theorizing and writing, but I got exceptional training on, on data analysis. So I've never had a line of reviews on my data analysis. The second point that is very important where I, you know, there's, there's no discussion. I've never had to change this in my papers is about the, the model of the phenomenon. So this is this, this column here, okay? The model of the phenomenon. So there was no argument that I was doing a model of the dramaturgical production of performance data in my first paper. There was no argument that I was doing a model about how um, um, the data, the information that people use to work becomes the data that they share with others in their company's information systems. Even in the reviews of the knowledge hiding paper, there was no argument about this being uh, about um, managers hiding knowledge from their peers. What the discussion is about is, you know, is this quality of information or is it something else? Is this about, um, you know, what information technology is or is it about something else. So normally what happens is the, the theory that I send, so the, the introduction and the bottom end of the discussion that I send uh, tends 
to be cast at a higher level than uh, what the paper ends up being about, okay? So this, um, my dramaturgical paper, the first version that I sent was about um, this information processing theory of the firm. So cast at a very high level, uh, my transfiguration work um, used to be about, um, you know, something about uh, control, um, you know, and then it went a little bit down closer to the data about the quality of information. Um, the knowledge hiding paper, I didn't get a uh, pushback on boundaries uh, when I submitted the paper, but I did get pushback on boundaries uh, when I presented it uh, at a conference. So this is where the discussion is. But you've already won here, right? Because you, the core of your paper remains unchanged. The, the reviewers buy the core of your paper, right? And what, what you're doing is you're offering them something that they can work on with you, which is the, the broader theory. And it's okay to change that because the core of the paper is really not changing, okay? So what I want to do now is um, I really want to zoom in because I want to uh, help you understand what are you supposed to write when you're writing a paper in this structure. And the key here is what you, are you doing on the theory section, okay? So that's what I want uh, to to share with you okay and again what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, at, at the individual papers that we've been um, that we've been discussing okay so remember that the the recipe here is there is a model of this uh, phenomenon another model is possible and um, that other model uh, offers us ins theoretical insights. It allows us to craft a theoretical contribution, okay? So for my dramaturgical uh, uh, piece, MS Quarterly 2013, what I said is that the current literature on the production of performance data is functional, meaning that the production of performance data is done to inform. Okay. Then I looked at the literature and said, well, there's another model that is possible about the production of performance data, and that this is not to inform, but to impress. Okay. So again, here's a nice distinction, inform versus impressing. And you always want, you don't want to say, nobody has looked at this before. What you want to say is that there is research that has looked at this impression management problem, but it has done so in a limited way. So what I argued here is that current literature looks at the problem of information systems for impression management as something that managers need to defend from. And, it, you know, there's a lot of literature about how you um, conceal or how you, um, you know, just distort information to hide stuff, okay? Um, and what my paper does is it says, no, managers can actually take advantage of this, can exploit this. So this is explo this exploitative model to, to use information systems to impress our leaders, right? And um, in the discussion, then I have this concept of information systems being a store window rather than a window. Notice that even at the, going down one level, I'm still uh, using this recipe that Kaufman gave about cold beers and good distinctions, right? I'm saying it's exploit defensiveness versus exploitation, something that I have to deal with rather than something that I can take advantage of, an opportunity rather than a threat, okay? In my transfiguration paper, what I do is I say, okay, the model now is that information about people's work is just a subproduct of people's work, right? So people don't have to do any work, managers don't have to do any work to produce records, information, data about work. 
And then again, I go back to the literature and I say, well, you know, we have enough evidence to say that uh, reporting work can actually be a lot of work, right? And so what I argue is that um, representation work, so the, job, the, the work of reporting on what you do or on what employees do is an additional job, not only an additional job that employees have to do, but an additional job that leaders have to take on. They have to motivate and lead and enforce and so on. Okay, so I end up saying that the quality of information is something that people do rather than a property of technology. Okay, now in the paper that I'm writing now, um, this um, knowledge hiding, the idea is that IT is used to share knowledge and there's a lot of research on how you use IT to share knowledge. And I look at research and I say, okay, but there is some research that shows that people use IT to hide knowledge, okay? But this is about hiding knowledge from peers. It's about power and influence, right? And what I argue is that there's also this knowledge hiding between managers and their leaders. And this allows us to think that's a theoretical contribution about boundaries in new ways, okay? So overall, what is the idea? What is the magic recipe, the secret recipe that I use that has helped me a lot, that has proven to be effective for me. It is to look at current literature as one specification of a different model, using my data to build an alternative model, and then use this alternative model to uh, withdraw consequences for theory. Okay. What is what is the difficulty here? Where is your, your creative voice? Um, what do you need to develop as a skill to be able to use this, this model? Because, you know, it's not easy. I mean, it is easy because I can do it. It's just not, you know, just not a template. Um, the key skill is this idea about coming up with a new specification about saying that, um, you know, current literature is functional, I'm doing a dramaturgical model. Um, current literature says that uh, representations of work as, are a subproduct of work versus representation of work being burdensome, about knowledge having being horizontal versus vertical, okay? That's where um, your creativity lies. That's, that's the challenge, that's the, the difficulty. And that is why I told you that something that is really important, how to publish in good journals when you're not a genius, is that you stay long enough with the paper, no, you know, to come up with these insights. Now, there are, there is one thing that I found out through the review process that I think can help you in doing this. And this one thing is that in all of the review process for, the, for this paper, um, the reviewers have pushed me closer and closer to the data, to remain closer and closer to the data. Um, and so the idea is that you need to ask yourself, you know, your research question is almost, what is the challenge that people are facing in your research setting? What is the main problem um, that they are facing? Okay, good. So um, I hope this is useful. Um, you can take a look at uh, how I implemented this in, uh, in, in, in my two MISQ uh, papers. You can read how this structure is uh, trans transformed into a paper. And I'm obviously like super happy to, um, you know, review papers or uh, uh, answer, answer questions, okay? And now I have to say that the reason I use these two papers is that these two papers are basically single author papers. One of them has a co-author, but I did uh, most of the work. Uh, so, so you know, so I know this works, and I I, I know um, I really know how to do this. Um, so it's a it's a good uh, structure template uh, to follow if you want to to aim really high with your research. Okay. Um, let me just uh, finish by uh, if you're watching this uh, video on YouTube to ask you to like and subscribe that uh, really helps a lot. Just liking is great, subscribing is amazing. Um, 
I had a pretty rough week this week. Um, I had a couple of like actually uh, two revised resubmit decisions, but the letters were really rough. So I felt a little bit sad and discouraged. And it was also the first time I missed my son's birthday. So I was feeling a little bit low and just for mental health issues, I, I didn't stream the second half of the week, but I do stream every day and the videos on our all posted on the YouTube channel. Okay. So uh, I hope to see you around or see you soon. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Have a good one, guys.